welcome back to the Tobago Updates Youth Morning Show. Now, Red Eye, it's something that we've all heard in Tobago. And some of us may have even used our local remedies, such as going to the seaside with a lime to wash out the eye. So we know that Red Eye is no stranger here to Tobago. So chatting with us this morning is none other than Dr. Smith. A special morning to you and how are you doing? Good morning. I'm doing fine. Thank you, Luke, for having me. Okay, great. Now, Red Eye, this is a virus that... I think we've all heard about since primary school. Sometimes as little kids, when we hear someone has red eye, the first thing we want to do is run away and try to be as far away from this, pers this person as possible because we don't want to contract that red eye. So for our viewers and listeners, tell us a bit about what red eye is all about. Okay. So red eye, the medical term is viral conjunctivitis or epidemic keratoconjunctivitis. I know it's a long word, but what it really is is inflammation of the conjunctiva. The conjunctiva is that white part of your eye that most persons see, okay? And sometimes it can involve the cornea or the clear or the translucent part to the front of the eye, or the people say the black okay. or the baby. <laughs> so not all the time it involves that, but it's really the inflammation of that white part of the eye, the, con the conjunctiva. So what causes this red eye? So the epidemic conjunctivitis mm -hmm. is really usually caused by a virus. Um, sometimes the adenovirus is the most common one. It could be any of the others too. There's a large, large repertoire of viruses that just love to infect us and make us uncomfortable. But um, it's usually viral. Sometimes you can have bacterial also, but they present with different signs also. And uh, my question is, is this virus, is it like a seasonal thing? Like, is it um, peak during certain periods or is it just something you can't get at any time? So you can't get it at any time because viruses pretty much inhabit our planet all the time. Mm -hmm. But there are some times when they are really more, as we say, epidemic or they're more prominent. And sometimes you can find them during the flu season. So you're looking like sometimes between the, 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 the months of, in our setting, between the months of December to March or the summertime, mm -hmm. between June, July, August. These are what we call the, the flu season or the, the, the peak season when, these, when persons' allergies may flare and when persons tend to get the flu a little more often than other times of the year. So you can look for it around these times of the year. But it doesn't mean it can't happen at other times of the year. Okay, noted. And is it contagious? Is it something like, you know, if I rub my eye and I touch you, can you get red eye? Is it that type of um, virus? Oh, yes. It's highly contagious. So mm -hmm. the precautions they took in school days long ago pretty much applies now. Because it's viral and it's, it's highly contagious, you, there are certain precautions. For instance, um, the discharge from your eyes. So most persons, the symptoms of red eye would include a red eye. It feels teary or gritty. You feel as though there's gravel in the eye. That's what they come and complain about. Uh, some persons can complain about a discharge, but not so much a discharge, but their eye continue running. That period when the eye is very red or tearing, as we may call it, is when it's highly contagious. And it usually lasts between 10 to 14 days. That is almost the entire course of the entire prodrome, the, the entire course of the um, the course of the sickness itself, the illness. Okay. So if you rub your face or if you touch any surface, that virus will stay there until the next suspect susceptible person passes and touches that surface. And then they rub their face, and that is how it is spread. Okay. Almost as, unfortunately, as contagious as COVID, but not spread by coughing. Mm -hmm. So they must first come in, they must first contact their face or the discharge from the eye, and then it is passed on like that, touching your friend, touching someone else. The precautions when you have red eye me, would include frequent washing of the hands, because that is primarily how it is spread. Of course, if you live in a home where there are other persons living with you, we advise that you don't share pillowcases or bed linens. If it is, you must share the same bed. Mm -hmm. If you can be in a different room altogether, it'll be best. When you're talking about having your own you eating utensils and so forth, you handle your your utensils. And of course, every moment you remember your name and you remember you're alive, you wash your hands. At least that's what we advise our patients. Every time you think you forgot, just wash your hands so you can protect everyone else around you. 
Okay, and it brings us to the most important part. How do you treat red eye? Because I know in Tobago, we have all local remedies. Mm. You know, people like to go down to the sea yeah. with the lime and they wash out their eyes. Some people even um, use lime. cold water. Yes, they use the lime. That's, that's the remedy, a lime. Oh. And you wash out the <laughs> eye. And um, I know when um, my mom and I had red eye, um, we used cold water. We just kept washing mm. it with cold water. And it kind of felt because, like I said, that gravel feeling, mm -hmm. it is horrible yeah. but from a more medical perspective how do you treat red eye so red eye because it's caused by a virus it must run its course so we can't give you a cure meaning that you come and you, we give you something and it resolves in a, in a day or two but we can mitigate the symptoms or sort of relieve them as it runs its course and so usually we invite persons to get preservative free artificial mm -hmm. tears it's pretty much like a wash okay. that you keep applying to the eye and what it does, it decreases the viral load in your eye and it sometimes makes your body's response to what is there a little manageable. We also advise persons to use a cold compress, the cold water as you were talking about. And that's where you put some a rag in some cold water or something cold and you just rest them over your eyes to kind of help with the symptoms. Of course, if persons have symptoms that would include blurry vision or change of vision, a discharge that looks kind of sticky and, or colored, and any other intractable pain, we advise you to go and seek medical attention so that to make sure nothing additional is going on with the eye that may require something more than just home remedies or conservative management. And it brings us to the next um, local, well, the long practices they have when it comes to treating red eye. Some of the older folks believe that um, to treat it, you can use your first morning urine or even a feeding mother's breast milk to um, put it in the eye and that will quote-unquote help remedy the situation. Is that true? Are there proven facts to back up these, these, these ancient remedies? <laughs> I don't want to um, throw any cold water over some person's personal experience mm -hmm. that they may think work, but uh, no, there's no medical um, backing for those remedies. Um, I have heard of it before, you know, <laughs> but... No, I, ca I can't say that I've ever seen it medically proven. Mm -hmm. If we stretch our minds very thinly, we could probably try to figure out why it works in some instances. But I can <laughs> tell you, for viral conjunctivitis, it will not help. Um, vi viruses don't respond to any sort of antibiotic mm -hmm. treatment or management, which is why it must run its course. If it was antibiotic, some persons suggest that sometimes the ammonia in the urine might have helped or the antibodies in the milk might have, in the breast milk might mm -hmm. have helped. But, but that's still stretching it when it comes to um, if it's bacterially caused. And I wouldn't advise anyone to do that if that is the case. Mm -hmm. You know, just go and get a normal antibiotic <laughs> in a bottle. We have that. It's not so expensive. Okay. In fact, you get it free at the hospital. But um, for viral conjunctivitis, the normal red eye, no. Don't put these things in your eyes. It irritates your eyes. It can inflame your symptoms. And there are more simpler, um, um, more healthy ways to manage it while it runs its course because one it course is going to. Okay, thank you, Dr. Smith. And resources, if people want to get more in-depth information about this red eye virus, are there any resources they can, they can find, they can reach out to on Facebook, internet, where can we find more information? Sure, I mean... It's out there. Google is it's very common. It's not just in our setting, all through the world where there are trees and, and mm -hmm. viruses and bugs. Mm -hmm. So you can find it on Google. You can, if it is, you, you, you're not too sure of the sites you want to go to, to Google because Medscape is a very, um, Medscape is a very popular and a reliable site. Uh, you could always go and speak to your local doctor at your health center because that is one of the first places that advise persons to seek attention when their symptoms come on them. Because I wouldn't want you to have it. Try to manage yourself at home. Some persons need to be, you know, restricted to their homes and not enter into the school system or their work system because of how contagious it is. And when persons have these symptoms, there's downtime because they can't function as you'd want to. So you'd want to share that gift with everybody. So seek medical attention at your health center. And they can give you the leave so to restrict you till you're, you're better. Or, and also... Um, if you don't want to see the health center, you can seek a private doctor. Any GP will be able to, you know, diagnose it, manage it, and guide you with respect to how you should be able to approach it. Okay, Dr. Smith. So any closing before we wrap up this morning? Um, well, just to say that, um, 
yes, red eye is out there. Um, persons, be aware of the symptoms. It's very sudden. It happens in one eye. It's red, it's gritty, it's teary, and then it moves on to the other eye in a couple of days. It worsens over four to seven days, so don't expect it to just stay like that. It will get worse. Don't panic. Seek medical, medical attention should you have these symptoms and you can manage it comfortably at home with artificial tears, preservative free, preferably. So look for that on the bottle and with a cold compress. Don't panic. It will go away in time. So don't expect that the, the tears and the compress is going to take it away in five days. It will run a course of at least 14 days. So be aware, be assured the end will come. All right, so I want to thank you, Dr. Smith, for joining us here on The Youth Show and keeping us informed with that red eye virus. So, viewers, that was our segment with all things red eye. So, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Just remember to share the live, share the live, share the live.